there's things that we're going to cover today. We're going to cover whether we embrace our belly or we loathe it. Obviously, yes. neither. We're going to find that balanced place. We're going to talk about the belly fundamentals. We're going to talk about getting the crap carbs out, getting the sugar out. Yes. Just the basic things we all do and that some of us don't do and we should be doing, right? And then the fun part. We're going to cover all the different bellies. Oh, why you have names. it. I've got names. How you can names. get rid of it or how you might need it. We're going to be so balanced on this jolly belly bond Because podcast. we are not belly bashers. No. We love us some belly, but we don't want us some unhealthy belly. There you go. I'm a big fan of the belly. Yeah. This is The Party with Serene and Pearl. Get it right. P-O-D-D-Y. Hey, welcome back, baby birds. It's been a whole week. And to say we missed you would be an understatement. We hope you're doing well. Gals, how are you doing? I am loving your Kokomo hat. I was about, to, because I hadn't really looked at you. I had talked to you, Danny, when you walked in. We had just the greatest conversation. Yeah. The pre-party fodder. No, we right. were singing Kokomo and you were singing while you were peeing in the bathroom. It was a I great I know, but we were moment. bonding or bonding. Yeah, yeah. And then I hadn't really looked at you. And now, as soon as you announced the party, I looked at you and saw the hat. You didn't know why we were singing no. Kokomo? Didn't. You just, you just joined in, like not even knowing why. Yeah, Kokomo, it's from a restaurant near my house. So it's not from the it's island. It's not from the Co- island. Beach, the Beach Boys greatest hit. Yeah. You kind of want to go in. I, yeah. I Come on, dare anyone to be in a bad mood and sing that song out loud. Yeah. And I dare you to stay in a bad mood. I, I know. can't do it. it but you have to done. turn it up. You have to rock it. You I'm, don't even have to have the background music. You just sing it right now. Yeah. If you're in a bad mood. Lago, Montego, baby, why don't we go <laughs> down to Kokomo? We'll get there <laughs> fast <laughs> and then we'll take, take it, it slow. slow. That's where we wanna go. Way down in Coco Mo. I wanna <laughs> clap your hands. What, what did you say? I thought I wanted to show Catch a glimpse. <laughs> I want to show Bisha. That's what I say. <laughs> anyway, we've got meat. What does it say? I don't know. We don't want to know. You shouldn't know. You should just sing whatever your mouth yeah, makes. But see, yeah. I don't understand it because that, that song reminds me of Australia, our beach days, right? Growing up mm. on the ocean. Mm. It was big time memories for me. But you said no. no you were like, no, I, I sing it here in the middle of the Tennessee yeah, Southern, blasted that when Southern my kids Baptist were teenagers. community. Uh, we all blasted that in the house. Hey, um, we have that. A really good meaty podcast today. Oh, I'm excited about today. Dan, you're going to love. Hey, Kokomo, you're going to love today. So tune in. Well, I hear a radio <laughs> or something. It, I don't, because my, my ears phone. must be too old. You hear a radio? Shh, shh, listen. It's the fridge. I it's don't. the aircon. No, it's and a radio. And everyone who's listening want us to get to this meet and want us to shut up on all yeah. the rabbit yeah, trails. Yeah, if we want to get back to being like the best health and wellness podcast other than 2018, we've we got to yeah. bring our yeah. game. And this, this podcast will do it today. You think today? We so actually there. decided if we bring this podcast back from the grave, yeah, we're, we're all going to go on a party cruise. Hey. And we're not you listeners, sorry. <laughs> You're mean. <laughs> Not all of us. Just, just us and the crew here. Well, I mean, I guess you could pay your own way. But we'll pay for Dan Dan and we'll pay for Mike and we'll pay for KJ and ne- KJ. JJ. JD, I just called you Coach KJ. KJ, we're and listening. He said, you said my name. I'm in. You're paying <laughs> for me. and Arden. And we'll take our husbands. Yeah, no, I've got to have the husband. All right. To the, Guys, to the there meet. is rock music playing there at a very rock. low there's volume. No, it is not. Check your phone. Listen to your phone. Put We're it to your We're not getting awards right now. People, <laughs> you want to go on a cruise, Danny. You want to go on a cruise. We have to bring the meat. It's, hey, mm. hey listen, you better just check it. into the mental ward. <laughs> I just heard something. Um, this is the Bally podcast because Dan's not even concentrating. Dan, just forget it, okay? It's. This is it the podcast that's bringing us back to met real medals, not the ones that, not the thing that we were given a few weeks ago. This is going to be a real. I can't hear award. it now. I'm worried about myself. Sit down, Danny. Do you want to go on a cruise? Yes or no? Oh yes. Okay. The whole reason he's here. Is well, for let's this bring cruise. it because we're going to get an award for this podcast. You think we'll get an award this year? Yes. Yeah. This, then we'll you're going to love cruise. this podcast. It's going to relate to you, Danny, because I've I've seen you really really stressing over over this particular area okay so okay. this is all about the belly the belly party hey. your stomach yeah 
your little poochie pooch. It's not that he has a poochie pooch. He's yours. just aware not of his pain All in of his us tummy. have a belly in the middle of our centers of our bodies. And we, we want to talk New about Zealand, that area. I don't know. Well, 100%. I don't know. We used to grow up calling it a pukanui. Yeah, pukanui. Was, was that a Maori name or uh-huh. we just grew up saying no, that? No, that's a Maori name. Puku? Pukanui. For the stomach. A puku yeah. for short, like tum-tums. Yeah. Pukanui, tummy. You can call it a tummy, you can call it a belly, you can call it a pooch, you can call it a, a mum bod or a dad bod or whatever. But we're going to talk about it today because we have grown in belly knowledge, Serene, you and oh, I. Oh, yes. But can I just open up with the one thing? Yeah. I don't care how much knowledge you get about your belly. I don't care if you're ticking all the boxes that we're going to talk about today. I found it. If? It was my phone. Okay, oh, good. Well, I'm so glad you can found it. Can you come it. back to potty land now? What I reckon, Dan... Put it down. You're not I'm coming sorry. on the cruise. I'm excluding I'm sorry. you. I'm going to take <laughs> Mikey and not Dan. Oh, who is that? Is that... That reminds me of that guy that used to sing in a suit. What, Rush, no. what, what was yeah. that guy's yeah. name? You mean you've been... What's it? Ricky. You've been... Ricky. Ricky. Rick. Rick. Hold on. What, what, is, what do you say when you've been Ricky? I just want to tell you how I'm feeling. Yeah. Oh. You've been what? What's his name? Oh. I just want to tell you how I'm feeling. Yeah, he's a white guy that sings black. Yeah, what? in a suit. And he does this kind of click from side to side. It's a thing. You listen to a song oh. and you've been... Look it up, Ma- uh, Mikey. Rick, what? No. Rickrolled. You've been Rickrolled. I know, but what was his full name as an artist? Rick Ashley. Rick Ashley. Rick Ashley. Rosie? Rick Ashley. Ashley. So. Okay, back to Bally's. <laughs> Um, no, listen, this is, I was back to my point. I'm so gl- so smart. I remembered what I was going to say. Yeah, you're very. <laughs> I don't care. If you're over 18, you don't look at your belly past lunch. It's a rule. Okay, but we're going to get to that later. You've always ru- already ruined but the award. But don't you think that rule is a good rule? Boy, she yeah. took the wind out of your but sails. But it's not something we're starting with, with this belly podcast. Oh, I, we're going to, are we previewing it? Okay, that was a preview. Yeah. <laughs> don't you hate movies? That was a little they tip. Show you the whole, <laughs> they show you the real big poignant part of the movie that you're meant to be in anticipation and suspense over and they show you in the preview. The whole film. Oh, it makes me mad. I refuse Serene, to watch previews. I want you to think of awards in your head <laughs> and don't Think of the cruise. Think of the cruise. Think We're the not cruise. going on the cruise if we bomb. <laughs> okay. So there's things to th- we're going to cover today. We're going to cover whether we embrace our belly or we loathe it. Obviously, yes. neither. We're going to find that balanced place. We're going to talk about the belly fundamentals. We're going to talk about getting the crap carbs out, getting the sugar out. Yeah. Just the basic things we all do and that some of us don't do and we should be doing, right? And then the fun part. We're going to cover all the different bellies. Oh, why I got you some have names. it. I've got names. How you can names. get rid of it or how you might need it. We're going to be so balanced on this jolly belly bod podcast. Because we are not belly bashers. No. We love us some belly, but we don't want us some unhealthy belly. There you go. I'm a big fan of the belly. Yeah. So, Serene, when we first started this whole Trim Healthy Mama thing, we wrote our first book, which took you five, five years. And the book's been out, what, let's say 13, close to 13 years. So that's 18 years mm-hmm. ago. We wrote a sentence that kind of went like this. If you have excess fat on your belly, yeah. it is likely due to excess unhealthy carbs in your life. There is truth to that. Yeah, there is It, it is like layer one, yeah. right? It's like fundamental sugar, spiking blood sugar, unhealthy, divitalized carbs. They do put fat on your belly. However, I wouldn't stand behind that fully No, I know because there's so many nuances to that because maybe you could eat the same amount of carbs if they were gentle if you just got in the gym, yeah. if you just didn't sit around all day, yeah. if you got a place for those carbs to be put, which is hungry muscle cells. But even if... Your diet is optimal, but you're getting older and you're losing hormones. Yeah. Your body likes to put fat on in a particular area, and we'll discuss that later. So even though I say, yes, there's a lot of truth to that, I would say, no, we didn't see the full picture. We were young premenopausal women, and we didn't understand that. It was a broad swath. (laughs) Yeah, it was kind of a broad swath, and it had truth. But I think we've grown in truth, and we want to add more truth to it. We're also different body shapes, right? And some of us, even if we have excess weight on our body, we'll have kind of a flat belly and the weight will go, say, maybe hip thighs. Saddlebag. Yeah. Um, some people don't always put their belly weight there. Mm-hmm. Um, so I always have slightly, no matter what I do, it's just my rounded shape. I don't have a lot of belly 
fat, but I do have a rounded belly. Well, the organs have got to sit somewhere. Yeah. So some of us are going to have more rounded bellies than others just because the way our organs or sit, if you're our not bone so wide structure. Hit. Yes. You don't have a, a, a bigger lounge room to sit all your organs in. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, you know what I mean? If you have them, your hips spread apart, you have more room for your organs to sit so the stomach can yeah. be a little flatter. I think you're narrow, too, you just, you know. It's before go we somewhere. start on the how-tos and how to get a, an overall healthy belly area, because we're not talking about flat belly. Some of us will never attain that and we shouldn't. Some of us women have to have a rounded belly. It's what, the, the way we're made mm-hmm. and it's part of our curves, right? Yeah. Um, but I think... Some of it is bone structure it too. It is. If your hips kind of sit forward and you have like an anterior pelvic tilt, there will be just a a forward uh, direction of the organs. And it's mm. not necessarily, it's not from a diastasis mm-hmm. where they're poking through the, the muscle layer, not at all. It's just, it's just the way they're going to sit a little more forward. Mm-hmm. And we're going to talk about many things today about the rest of the body becoming, you know, um, gaining back its lean body mass and how that affects the, bo- the belly. We're going to talk about all those areas. But just to say at the very beginning, like Serene said, we're not out to bash a belly, but we're also not out to just say, it's okay to have a, um, a sugar belly because it's mm. very unhealthy. It's very it's unhealthy okay to, to have, have a belly from excess blood sugar. Right. And, it's, and it's, it's not okay also to have a I give up belly. Yeah. You know, where you just don't care anymore. Right. And we'll tell you the reasons why you should care. Yeah, we will. So the belly is always or most of the time an indicator of health. Well, <laughs> I use mine like a barometer. Well, we can't. But that's look at, my body We can't style. look at somebody else. You see, and say mine's that's, sticking that's out further than that person's. Of course, because it could be bone structure, like we were saying. It could be for so many reasons. But if it's excess, mm. where you can pinch more than you know, yeah, a normal well, excess amount, for you. And yeah. I think everyone knows their unique, healthiest body. And uh, it is such an individual thing. And I think, Danny, what you were saying, I've been in moments of my life where I have been obsessed with a belly. I'm like, I have a, I have a rounded belly. I shouldn't. But actually, my body type wants a little rounded belly. There's a little bit of fat there. That's okay. It's not too much. But it's just going to round. It's my shape. Mm. And I think that some of us women get obsessed and unhappy with ourselves because we're not exactly in this picture of what we think a woman should be. Right. So I want you to cover, we'll cover it all together, all of like the basic fundamentals because then I want to move on to the belly Mm. names because then we can, you can find where you, you know, people that are listening find, oh, that's, that's where I sit. Yes. And then we'll help give practical steps to walk out of that or embrace that if you want. I love that. So Bally 101, like we said before, if you're living a lifestyle that's the standard American diet, if sugar is a regular habit, if you are eating devitalized foods, if you are eating, you know, standard American diet, Stop. Because it is going to give you a belly and it will be the unhealthy kind it's of belly. It's the inflammation belly. And you can be thin everywhere else yeah. too. You'll be like, oh, I'm not overweight. Yeah. But if you have that excess on the belly and it's from sugar, mm-hmm. then it's, it's, it's the breeding of disease at and that le- point And let's get real. I'm saying stop here. But we've had potty after potty of potty of how, how, how to stop. We coach yeah. you through stopping. We coach you with all the whys and we're kind and nice. Yeah. I'm just saying right now, 101, stop. Okay, get yourself a natural sweetener if you love sweet foods. I mean, that's why we created Gentle Sweet because it replaces that sugar and it doesn't put all that belly weight yeah, on your stomach. Yeah, turn to Gentle Carbs. No more just noodling it out at night. Yeah. You know, right. we're just going to the, you know, the potluck for your church or your, you know, whatever places you're eating socially during the week and, and just noodling it out. And what I mean by that is just the devitalized carbs. Mm-hmm. And get soda out. I mean, just stop it, really. Yeah. It's serious. Yeah, and the ice cream every night when the children go to bed or just when you may, your children may be raised, it just be just your little alone time after a hard day in the office. But maybe there's a time for that, the vitamin P, but not every night. Mm-hmm. We're getting bossy today. We no, are. I, f- I find a way to get to sugar often at night. And in my subconscious whispers in a motherly tone, I need this. Mm-hmm. But guess, it. well, then it's not a motherly but tone. But guess what? I think it's a bratty tone. Guess who whispers? Mother too. knows best, right? Guess yeah, who mama. whispers? Wisdom whispers. It's a what? still small voice and it's wisdom. So yeah. you really have to tune in to who's whispering. But you know how you've often said here at the party, Danny, you're like, if, if you and Lisa are in a bit of a cute little 
um, quirky, intense conversation. Oh, we nice. won't call it an argument, you're but in the nice. evening, you both say to each other, <laughs> we're, we're nuts right now. Anyway, it's late at night. People are nuts late at night. We'll, we'll yeah. reconvene in the morning. You ever done a good one, one am -er? No, I've done a while, but guess what? But that, but that's the that's same thing with your kitchen and your your mouth and your headspace. It's like okay, we don't make good decisions late mm -hmm. at night in yeah. the kitchen or what goes in our mouth. So we're going to reconvene them. You just basically shut that whole thing down. And say we'll reconvene in the morning. You're not even going to go there. The nighttime in my kitchen is is a den of devils. Okay, so you know, <laughs> I mean. Okay. We've been here six and a half years, Dan. You've you've covered a lot of ground. No, you I don't mean so the food I keep. I mean, yeah. I mean, there's healthy food in there, but I don't need to eat a raw potato at midnight. Right, <laughs> but I'm saying you've come a long way. You you are not in your wife's robe in depression and just wanting to eat cereal. You were protein in it. You were working out. You were getting your meals in now. And now. So your kitchen doesn't have to stay a den of devils. And we're not saying you can't ever go into your kitchen at night and eat. I eat. I always have a snack before bed. It's how my body is designed. Yeah, like, I don't. I have low blood sugar at night before I go to bed. I can't even sleep because I'm mm -hmm. too hungry. So I'll, I will always have a protein rich snack or a little fresh fruit juice, not fruit juice, but juicy fruit, like not mm -hmm. hard to digest, just some you know, something. I something don't give else. in to Lou, but he waits for me in the kitchen oh, at night. Oh, he does. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think that's why. Lou I... for loser. Lucifer. Lucifer. Oh, Lucifer. <laughs> okay. I um, I have to brush my teeth at a certain hour, or because that's my sign, or Lucifer just comes for me too. He comes and oh, and yeah. what prevents tooth brushing? Oh, tooth brushing no, I mean, isn't strong tooth brushing for me. prevents Lucifer. Oh, you're saying I've brushed, I can't eat anymore. I mean. It's just a sign. It's settling. It's like you're out, Pearl. You're done with eating. You're done with the day. Now is your time to do that thing where you just stop. Yeah. You're getting to bed soon. All yeah. of that. And another, there's little tips and tricks though, because I have a little sleep drink that I have at night and it's yummy. It's quite yummy. And it's oh, that's mixture. in our wisdom book coming up. Yeah, it's a up. mixture of all there. my things that I love to have at night, but it's become a very nice flavored little drink. And if I think, oh, I got to go and have just something, I want a little something in the kitchen. This is after I've had my protein because I was, like I said, have a nice snack before I go to bed to settle me. Um, but if I'm still going crazy after that, I'm like, no, 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 you've got your sleep drink to wait for you. And you'll really enjoy that if you just, you know, you'll, you'll deserve that. And it's nice. And so I have little things set aside. I have this little thing I, I suck. It's a nitric oxide tablet. Yeah. It tastes yummy. Oh. And that's my other little treat before I go to bed. She does that to op like optimize her sex but I function. I have a little, I have like little treats that I look forward to that don't have to be food. Nitrous oxide? What's nitric it? oxide. It's a tablet. Yeah. Just, it it's helps. also good for your skin, blood, and circulation and all that. <laughs> Let's write her down. Men can take it too. Well, well, it's for men. It's my husband's. I just, I just nick it. I like it too. <laughs> okay. While we're on the topic and then we're going to go to Belly's. Yes, we are. Melatonin. Are you for melatonin for gummies? It. Well, I obviously... I don't know about the gummies. could have junk in it. It's one Middle of the hormones girls, that decline, right? Middle school girls are cranking melatonin Yeah, I don't think well, that's a good idea because well, I'm all about optimizing hormones when they decline. Okay. Or when they're needed. So and, you're for yeah. it for women over 30 well, years I old. Well, I think it's safe after 40. I don't know. There might be special cases before that, but if teenagers if the, if a teenager is going to bed at the right time yeah and, and she's just struggling and, and yeah. struggling and struggling yeah. maybe yeah. she needs a little melatonin after she's tried other things like not put watching screens you know in the yep. evening hours that actually yep. takes down her own melatonin you know if she's ticked all the boxes to help her body produce its own maybe she needs a little yeah. supplemental but if she's like like not going to bed after midnight her cortisol is is re-released and so it's not letting her settle and doing all the wrong things and then just wants to pop a band-aid on top of that with some melatonin that's not cool i take melatonin every night i do too mm -hmm. i take 10 milligrams but y'all grown yeah we all gone um Belly, bellies so let's go back to the belly, Sereni. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that, that's the fundamental. Can we get into some of these names? Yeah, we're done with fundamentals. Oh, grand, grand, We've grand. covered them all a million times here. Okay, so I'm going to read my list, and then you're going to read our list, and then we'll go through slow. No, you, we're starting one mm. by one. Okay, well, we've done the sugar belly, basically. No, we haven't. We're going to okay, start well, no. on the okay. sugar. Which, which, which is your first belly? Well, I put, everyone's first should be sugar belly. Okay, well, let's just say that we have done that. I agree. Yeah, we I agree. just lost the award again. Okay. <laughs> Second, I wrote down, we just brainstormed. Pearl and I this morning were like, you brainstorm your list, I brainstorm my list, and we'll just swap notes. So that we've just got, we might have the same. Mm -hmm. uh, I've got a, a loose clothes belly. Okay, so what would you say that? I called it the covered belly. I call it out of sight, out of mind belly. Mm -hmm. Meaning there's a certain group of women. I'm just going to 
I'm just going to talk straight. Yeah, we're going to be mean you've, today. You've Fun. put it out of sight so you don't have to address it. Okay. Like if it's under the homeschooling denim tent, just, or I'm just, just straight. It, it doesn't have to be up. homeschooling denim tent. It might just be baggy box I know, t-shirt. but I'm using that because mm-hmm. I'm, I'm around that community a lot. Mm-hmm. And I can see, okay, it might be for religious modesty reasons. Great, that's fine. But it's also making, I can see a lot of it as just so that it can be out of mind. Mm-hmm. You, don't, you don't have to worry about it. You know, you don't, you don't see it. And so maybe when the lights are out, you don't see it either then. Mm-hmm. I mean, you just don't see it. It's out of sight, out of mind. And so I think there's danger to the loose clothes belly because what you don't see, you don't ever have to address. So true, Serene. And all the while, you have excess inflammation in your body. All the while, it's breeding a disease. All the while, it is just, it's, it's promoting, you know, dangerous cardiovascular mm-hmm. situations. I mm-hmm. mean... The list goes on. Yeah, so we're not saying you have to start dressing immodestly or tighter. We're just saying if you're going to cover it, okay, and if you're going to wear loose clothes, then you still should be addressing it. And I'm not talking about nightclub tight. Ooh, I'm not talking about that. But even the Bible said... You're pretty nightclub tight right now. Sarah was beautiful. Sarah, Abraham's wife, Mm -hmm. said she was beautiful of form and of face. It actually says that. How do they know she was beautiful of form? Excuse me. Unless their tunics came in a little bit on the waist. (laughs) Sorry, I'm like breaking There's the fifth seal. Is that right? Danny's Not allowed another to time. do that. Okay. Okay, listen. But my point is, maybe even back in the Bible, they, they drew those little tunics in around the waist. I'm telling you, when you bring something in at the waist, it allows you to know you have to address something. It does. All right, that's covered. I love it. Okay, great. The posture belly. Oh, that's a big one. Intra-abdominal pressure. So you might be thin. You might be ticking the boxes. You might be having only gentle carbs. You know, because we're all about carbs. We need them for for a brilliant burning metabolism. Um, But you also might be exercising and all of that. But it doesn't matter how much you strengthen in the gym. If you're strengthening in the gym with bad posture and then, or even if you're good posture in the gym, that you forget about it when you get out of the gym and you're just walking around what I call with a tired neck. Mm-hmm. Meaning when you, when, when you have that perky posture that we talked about in our work-ins, you imagine almost like you've got a ponytail and somebody's pulling it back and up a little bit. And it's what I call to my, my daughters, put your Russian neck on, like the oh, Russian ballerina. Yes. And so often, oftentimes my girls, because they're tall, if they put their neck to sleep, the chin juts forward and their belly juts out. And I have thin girls, but sometimes they can even have a pooch because they put their tired neck on. Thin. Can we just call healthy weight? Healthy, healthy. Yeah. Right, okay, good mummy, good. Because we're not seeking. But my thin. but look at this, look at this. When I no. put my Russian ballerina neck on, okay, I don't know if you could do that, but Pearl, see that? Yeah. My tummy is loose. Put my Russian neck on, it's connected. My stomach becomes secure. I'm not having to hold in my my belly or like suck in because that's dangerous you're not allowing proper oxygen but when you have a russian ballerina neck where you're standing and you say like neck stay awake you're not asleep so stay keep your neck awake i'm telling you your tummy will align Mm. and sometimes it can take 10 pounds look away from your tummy yeah the way we stand so true but sometimes it's you know and you you'll bring the neck in but that's it is kind of... Um, Sometimes people just say shoulders back, but I it's know. not a really good description because people can put the shoulders back and still from their neck down to their waist, it's not in alignment and their shoulders are just jutting back. No, that is so true. However, I think so many people, it's not just neck as well. They stand with their hips forward and oh. their whole... I mean, that could be neck too, but it's just... It's not an awareness. You know how sometimes people cover it with clothes? Yeah. Sometimes people just are not aware that they have a belly and that it's completely I'm not talking fat. Any We're just tension. saying, right, they're just letting the belly, they just forget that they have a middle of their body that's like the bridge between their glutes that, and their upper body. Yeah. That bridge is meant to be held some tension. Some, yes. Yeah, and, and what Pearl and I have always thought in our life is, if you imagine a sideways elevator, right, when you breathe in and, and a beautiful diaphragmatic breath or other people call it a belly breath, you know, your, your waist will naturally expand and as you breathe, you know, exhale, you can pull it all the way in like a corset, right? But we don't want to go around like that. But can you imagine your sideways elevator? If it was, went from zero to six, just go three floors. Mm-hmm. You just hold it at three. And that nat- sometimes the neck thing just holds it naturally at three to me. The neck thing may not work with everybody, yeah. but, my, but Pearl was right. A lot of women, especially after they have a baby or they've been holding a lot of children their whole life, they, they tip their hips forward 
to be a table for the children. Mm -hmm. Like, have you seen it, Danny? Where it's just like, like my arms are getting tired. So I'll kind of jut my bum forward mm -hmm. and I'll rest my babies on my tummy. And it's kind of, it will cause, it won't allow a diastasis to heal. Yeah, so post obviously baby. if you've got babies, you have to hold them. But when you're not... Yeah. No, you don't have to hold them like that because you're not strengthening. Yeah. Stand up straight. Hold them with the strength of your arms. Mm. Yeah, I had to learn to hold Switch babies with arm my arms. if you arms. need to. And I that's hold, great. Yeah. It gives you guns. I, I did that uh, ac not knowingly. I would yeah. I would stick forward and use it as a shelf. I, I used to do it in carpentry too. I would yeah. like hold like something, a, a piece of wood like that. And then I'd work over here. And yeah. I just started getting conscious of it. And right. it helps. The posture is a big deal. And you channel all the work to your arms. Right. And you're like, wow, I don't use my arms ever. I use my lower back and my gut. It's like yeah. you're using your midsection. So I think some women are too concerned with their belly and what it's looking like when they're standing up. Right? I'm always aware, but it's weird. But it's not like, to me, it's not like an obsession. To me, it's just, uh, uh, especially, I think people that are tall need to yeah. be aware more because you've just got a long ladder to keep straight. So I'm just more of aware of it. Otherwise, it would just be all right. But all what I'm saying is, sometimes you just got to relax and and not be perfect all the time, right? And I'm saying yes. Overall, let's think about our posture. Let's think about the um some some kind of holding it into that level three. What you're saying is just it's smart. But I think there is an obsession that some women can have with constantly having a tucked in tummy. Well, yeah, and there's certain tucked ins can be dangerous, yeah. like the suck in when you're not allowing yeah. proper breath. I totally agree with that. And because I had to let that go a little bit when I learned to properly belly breathe and right. just almost push, let the air really push it out and then go back in. Yeah. But just not be afraid that I have a belly too. Well, the thing is, is that a lot of people are, are clenching it and we don't want yeah. clenching. But if you are standing up with your neck awake mm -hmm. and you're standing up in, in a perky posture, not in this kind of like um, dull, kind of like mm -hmm. depresso posture, even if you're happy inside, you know, often people <laughs> just walk around kind of really dull. Yeah. Um, that it's going to, if you try and pull your tummy in, it's going to feel like a clench, but proper alignment will make it yes. feel easy. It should be very I agree. Easy. And it speaks volumes to who you meet, to where you go about life. It just is an incredible entrance when for I yourself in the this couch, world. When I want to watch a movie with my family and I'm yeah. not thinking about my belly, yeah. but if I'm going to be awake, if I'm going to walk to my driveway, if I'm going to be on a walk, don't walk for an hour in bad posture. Yeah. I know a woman who walks for an hour every day in bad posture and she's got a dowager's hump. Mm -hmm. Like it hasn't helped her. She has a what? A big dowager's hump. Like she must walk like this, you know, for, for hours. What's a dowager's? It's just the Your whole. Your neck really juts forward. And, and it's just a big, big hump on the back of their shoulders and, mm. and back. So I, I would suggest if, I mean, if you're thinking, well, some people are too tired to keep good posture. Stop working out in the gym. Just start with good posture. It is mm -hmm. ground floor. Mm -hmm. Okay. Next one. Okay. I have, um. The I sit too much belly? Yeah. Um, yeah. Because sometimes you just need to move around to burn fuel. You do. Sitting is what they say. It's the new smoking. But sitting for long amounts of time, especially beyond an hour. I mean, I have to sit a lot. Serene, you're much more obsessive than I am. Whenever we sit, you're just like, oh, getting up. Like every 15 to 20 minutes. But sometimes I can sit. Not in a movie and not no, at night time. But, but it can in the sit day. longer than that. But I make sure to get up at least in the hour. And just, you know, walk around or we do that, you know, what do we do? We Nitric do Nitric oxide. Yeah, um, the naughty. The naughty. We've done that. Um, and so just moving, moving. Otherwise, like Serene says, you're barely burning calories and just sitting also slows down your digestive system and the belly, uh, the fat accumulates. Just right think there. about old, the olden days, right? To go wash their clothes, they had to... Oh, walk down to the valley where the river was and you know, scrub, 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 scrub on a rock or a whatever they've decided to, that's their scrubbing board. They have to walk, ring it out. Mm, that's a lot of energy. It is a lot of energy yeah. to ring, my goodness. And then walk back up to wherever they are. And that's just washing clothes. But then what about washing dishes? What about cooking the chicken? Got to catch it, got to pluck it. Got Our life of press button, put in microwave, press button, the clothes are going round and round. It's and you don't normal. have to do anything. It's not normal. 
So we have to be conscious of if we just sit in, a, sit in our, wake up, sit down for breakfast, walk 20 feet to our car, sit down as we drive for 45 minutes to the office, sit down in the office all day, and we're constantly grabbing a snack from the vending machine or going out to lunch with clients or whatever, and then we get home and we walk the 40 feet again to the house and then do a whole other sit in the Netflix at night, sit, wow, belly, belly. Belly. Okay, next. All right, some of these ones we're going to skip because you're going to take them at the okay. end. The tanked hormone belly, pearl tick, it. you're going to take that. The insulin resistant belly, pearl's going to be a hero on that at the end. They're the biggies. We're going to finish with that. The bloated goat belly. Ooh, okay. We could embrace this if we want to. I do. I have a bloated goat belly. That's but it's you? been worse. Well, you've found moderation. Yeah, I found moderation. When I was a raw foodist and I didn't have the bricks and mortar of protein and everything, I, all I ate was just plant food and all of that. And I was like, a bloated goat, right? But now I choose to be a bloated goat because I want my microbiome can I, to be rich. Can I call it something now? Mm-hmm. Rather than a bloated goat belly, where, that's when it was in the extreme and a bit out there. Why don't we call it the microbiome belly? Right. I have a microbiome belly because I feed it fermentable fiber. Um, I feed it heaps of um, prebiotic fiber that's going to ferment and, call, and, and produce the short-chain fatty acid babies. No, they are excellent for your health. Like absolutely amazing. But they cause they cause some flatulence. Well, they're anaerobic gut bugs. So um, you've got but butyrate. Someone can, some people call it buttrate, right? And can come air out of your butt. <laughs> um, but it's so healthy for you. It's an anaerobic um, bug. Like and I take kefir all day and I thought put baobab in and all that. That's going to cause some short chain fatty acid production, right? And I don't care because I think this is the healthiest way. Like the cows are out there eating their, the things that are intended for them, the grass, and they create some methane. The world goes around, okay? <laughs> so it rip, tater chip. I, but when I wake up in the morning, I have a tiny flat belly, so I don't care. I just produce this micro and biome belly during the day. And I don't think it's it, – it could be even a different hemisphere by night, but I don't <laughs> care because That's, I know it's now not Now we're going to go back to the thing where you said don't look at your belly after you, lunch. You don't look at the other that, hemisphere. That was the preview. Now yeah. we're into it. Because food takes up room in your belly. Now certain foods do it more. When you do fibers, I'm a psyllium lover. When you do baobab, when you do plants and things like that, that we need, especially as we get older, right? Because they produce these fat-burning gut bugs and they are fat-burning. I don't have any fat on my belly, but I will have some bloat. Yeah, so... And it's not uh, can I bad food bloat. No. Like, you know what I mean? It's not from like you're allergic to that, you shouldn't be eating it. No. No, I know it's from the fibers because it comes soon after. Yeah. And, and, and some of us are just, you know, these gut bugs, they're anaerobic. That means they let off oxygen as they chow down on all this fiber. And some of us have bellies that really expand more than others as they eat food. So some people, like my daughter Autumn, eats the same diet as I do pretty much i mean she's having the key from the baobab and after a meal hers won't really ex- expand and mine will mine has always expanded my whole life it used to have terrible like flourages you know how we called <laughs> you know how we called fluffs that stink badly <laughs> flourages because we couldn't think of a worse name <laughs> remember that you were on that party it was the unshow dan it's called a flurge it was yeah. actually not the party it was the unshow it's Did you worse than an up? f-a-r-t yeah, it's worse than that. It's noxious. It's a combination of <laughs> fart and scourge. Yes. yes. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, so that used to be me, but now it's not that way. I still do have expanding Flirt. stomachs. Nate is meal. like, this is gross. This is gross. Yes, Nate, this is part Sorry, of health. Sorry, it's huge. This is part of biology. Women need to talk about their stomachs, and some of us deal with that, and others just don't as much. <laughs> I, I think they don't make it Now, I could, it's not fat, so I don't worry about it. I'm not it. done it's with not flurge. It's not the inflammation of fat, but, so, but I could choose, hey, I could choose to not eat those foods yeah. and I wouldn't deal with the, the, what do we call it again? The microbiome belly. Mm. But I choose to because the benefit outweighs the, the, the pesky symptom. Now, if I get up in the morning and I eat an S meal for breakfast and I don't, rare, I don't really have any plants, let's just say I have bacon and eggs and then for lunch um, I have a salad with chicken breast and ranch and then for dinner, let's say I have salmon. I don't know. I'm, I'm not talking about the healthiest option. Oh, I'm just no. talking about S meals, like a low carb diet. Maybe I'll just cheeseburger have pie. cheeseburger pie. And I don't know. Let's just say I'll, no, I won't have broccoli, but I'll, let's just say I'll have cheeseburger pie and some head lettuce. Okay. Yeah. There's not much microbiome flourishing things in head lettuce. Mm-hmm. I'm 
barely going to bloat in that day. Not much flurge. No, not much flurge. My stomach's going to stay nice and flat. I'm going to think, oh man, Pearl, you're kind of rocking it, but you're not rocking it. But guess what? There's times where we will choose that kind of diet. Yeah. Going out on a fancy, fancy wedding that night. We're wearing a dress that's oh, a little more form fitting. Yes. I'll be having the e- I'll be having the eggs for breakfast. <laughs> yes. I won't be having my oatmeal and my psyllium and my and your baobab, baobab and, and my kefir. kefir. And your, yeah. <laughs> but overall, those are making me so... Healthy. So if you're fine with a bloated goat belly, just embrace it. That's and our point. it makes you a fat burner. Yeah. Okay. The next one on my list, the excuses belly. All right. You know what to do. You just keep putting it off. Like all, like so many people that have been listening to this party that may still have yeah. belly issues. It could be that you're just saying, oh, excuses. And some of the excuses could be this. Okay. Bring it. Um, I let's what you're have a say. look. Um, life is too hard belly excuse okay like oh yeah but my husband he just you know he just lost his job lost his job and my mother-in-law came to live and we've heard that mm-hmm. combination many times right mm-hmm. and so I, I really can't eat thm right now all my season. kids are going in different directions right yeah yes this yes one yes has sports and yeah that yeah, one has yeah it's all it's all excuses bless your beautiful hearts but we're being bossy the bossy belly party Ooh. um bbp the the budget belly it's also an excuse i don't have money to get to to be to honor my belly yeah um so i'm going to all those cheap that you know you can get like a pack of potato chips for like a buck 20 you can get the white bread for like 99 cents the too busy Um, belly that's another excuse yeah. But we're going to talk, we're going to address some of these later on, though, how to make health, uh, how to make the ha- healthy habits quick. Another excuse is I can't give up my coffee creamer, the coffee creamer belly. Ooh, and what would you say the coffee creamer is? The one the, that you buy from the It's the pasteurized cream. It's like they just love the half and half from the cream and they really, yeah, or they like to do the lattes. Why, but why not, the cream. why not just exercise more? Like why give up no, cream? Because, no, cream. you don't have to give up cream, but no. some people can't take pasteurized cream. And we've got hip tips really? in and, All I'm saying hit, is it's, tips a, great, and hicks, tips it's and a great entrance to THM because you can get off your sugar laden coffee creamer, which is the worst, right? So then you come to THM and you're like, I'm allowed cream in my coffee. Yay. Yes, you are, baby girl. But guess what? Depends what season you are. If you really yes. want to get to that body burning stage where you're burning body fat, you might want to what, Serene? Not just have pasteurized cream in your coffee yes. and have a large amounts throughout the day constantly. You might want to be a bit balanced. Maybe have some nut pods in place. Maybe yeah. do a combination. Maybe and nut pods in coffee, to me, what happens, I love it so much. But, and it's got lovely nutrition stats. The numbers mm. are great. It's just one gram of fat per tablespoon. You only need a couple mm-hmm. of tablespoons and that's still way in fuel pool. Somebody flurged. I heard no, something. It was a it was flurge. <laughs> Mikey. Mikey, oh. did you flurge? Mike's ripping it. <laughs> was it his phone okay. vibration? Okay, phone. Well, you should have said it because we were all we thinking. We were talking about flourishes and then we heard the noise. <laughs> uh, no, but uh, my, but <sighs> straight knot pods and coffee, if you don't steam it, it but curdles. Steam it. it curdles coffee. So steam it. Or Mix if you add a milk. little bit of almond milk or I just do a little bit of my fresh goat's milk mm. or, or raw farm, you know, grass-fed milk. I just use a little bit. All you need is a little bit. Two tablespoons of nut pods, two tablespoons. Uh, I do regular like raw milk and steam it up question the, you're still in the fuel pool range you're under five grams of fat and it's and i steam it up together and it allows the nut pods to not curdle yes so Danny. is it that detailed for woman in that like even the cream no like, if you put a cap of cream in your coffee fine okay but these women are not they're okay. not Some measuring they the pouring they just go they're Poor looking for a color. Cuppers. I want white yeah. coffee ears. It's know. not going to help you if you're doing like, you know, three to four tablespoons of, of creamer several times throughout the day. It, and especially if you're in a season where your body is not burning fuels anymore. Mm-hmm. We're just saying it can contribute to the belly. Next one. Sorry. Okay, so those were some of the excuses, belly. Um, The eat too rich belly. We have to learn the density of fuels and how to use them for our success. Okay, so... Maybe when you first started out in THM, you could do the cheeseburger pie and you could do the chocolate cake for breakfast and you could do the, you know, the, the salad that had the goat cheese and the walnuts and the avocado and the ranch and everything and on oil. it, right? Some people continue the eat too rich throughout, even to their tank hormones, but Pearl's going to talk about that soon. Um, and you just got to learn, there are, there are different fuel densities within the THM lifestyle, okay? So you can eat lighter fuels and then you can eat medium fuels 
And don't always just stick on the rich, 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 rich. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's a beautiful balance and combination well, I got of one all for three. You. We're not saying rich is wrong. No. We're just saying rich all the time isn't the and way And a to lot go. of people say, well, I tried THM. It didn't work for, for me. But they often did the Pinterest THM, yeah. which is all the desserts. And all the baking and all the steak. Oh, and I can put cheese on top of it. I can make the grass-fed burgers and melt the cheese on top and then add like... All of the like the nice sauces and everything, and it's just too much. Do you know all what though? It can be a great entrance for men. It can be a great entrance for people that are coming off a high sugar lifestyle, and it's a great thing. And it I can still work. eat like that occasionally. Yes. It can work for premenopausal women, but women that start losing their hormones, you got to tweak things a little bit. How about what were the, you going to say? Dad? How about the self care belly? And I'm I'm doing that's I'm eating great wrong. vitamin P too much. The self care. Yeah, the vi- like I'm. I'm I'm loving myself. You deserve this. You need yeah. this. Yes. Which, That's which, great, Danny. Which Good. is right, by the way. Uh-huh. Like that is right. Self-care the, is awesome. The foundation of self-care mm-hmm. self-care is fantastic. Good contribution, eh? He hit that. Well, one I'm trying to yeah. participate. It's great. Um but yeah, I've I've done that one has been one for me is the whole yeah. like uh hey bro you've worked hard yeah you're out there doing it. I think you did an extra set today in the gym. Yeah. You know, like I'll be out and I'll, I'll try to find shit. Typically at home, it's just not in stock, yeah. <laughs> but I'll find a reason to go to the store. The old sinful nature rises up <laughs> and it takes me to the Walgreens across the street. You know, like all yeah. the treats in Walgreens now yeah. are just, and somehow you think they're in a pharmacy. So they're kind of, yeah, I'm in a pharmacy. Good. I'm yes. in a health food store, Walgreens, right? Gotta and, be but, good. But yeah, Walgreens just has aisles of like grocery. Yeah. It's all late night snacks. And when it I go is. in, my whole community's in there in their sweatpants and hoodies. We're all in there just like like hiding out like you two. Yeah, don't tell our spouses. All right. <laughs> Go over to the cold section. There's treats. There's little individual serve, self-serve treats. Yeah. The Walgreens people know what they're doing. Yeah, they do. <laughs> okay, well, this is what I say to the self-care belly. Learn other ways of self-care. It's great to have self-care from food. I believe in it. When it's, when it's an occasional um, vitamin P. Like Pearl, you love to self-care on a cruise with a bit of tiramisu I at do. the end of a nice meal. And mm. that's beautiful when you go on a cruise, not every night of the cruise. Or a family right. celebration where right. you all come together. Right, or right, right, right. Or Tuesday. <laughs> but <laughs> Tuesday is when it so needs to be cottage berry whip okay. rather than But there ice could cream. be self-care. Like to me, a beautiful walk, listening to someone else's podcast, not ours. <laughs> me. I don't want to listen to my own back. Yeah, yeah ours is bad. like I actually like listening to I it. Love my lis- favorite speakers, no. like a good old good old Graham Cook. I love listening to our podcast. Okay, oh, bless your heart. So but like, Danny, I love to funny. listen to a Graham Cook on a Fun. walk, a long walk. That to me is my favorite self care. Some people like baths. Some people like to just paint their nails and go get a manicure, non toxic one. Thank you very much. Yeah. Um, but do you there know what are I like ways. to do for self care? What I like to lizard out on like pavement in the sun oh that's good eh? like, but it's not too hot in the day though no no you can't like then it's like boil uh, yeah. but like to me that's just like heaven it's yeah. not like i don't want to obviously i'm not painting my nails right but like that type of stuff where yes. it's an activity like some people want to go paint pottery no i don't yeah yeah it's just but like that's to for them. Me, but you have, you've uh, said self-care too when you like walk to the top of this hill and the sun's setting and your daughter's running across the grass uh, and it's like that's like the ultimate in living in the moment yeah to me any solar activity yeah. is the most it, it, that's how to check out and relax is to let I the love sun it. hit and, you and some other people it might be i got to get away into the cold i've got to mm. go to the alaska and look at oh, the yeah cold you plunge know, or you know, something. i'm telling people. you i need we need to address this right now Do you, maybe you have this in netflix belly or oh no <laughs> but can i just uh, we'll go to the netflix belly oh, okay but well no stay here because it's self-care. kind of self-care go for it so go for i it. My husband and I like to watch a bit of telly in the evening. It's our thing. We've got our own area of the house yeah. and we completely shut the door and that's our own cave. You've got and a locked apartment. But it's, it's not locked. telly with that's ads so cool. and all that boring stuff. Well, there is no telly like it used to be. There's yeah. only streaming anymore, yeah, pretty yeah. much. Yeah. Um, so we watch different shows. You know, we're 
big, big fans of a like murder mystery type thing. And um, you go to hell. Did you ever watch Monk? Yeah. yeah, yeah. We love all the we shows to love like Monk. that. And for the other half who hate that, just know I'm praying for Pearl. Oh, I like how right. Serene's was, on like a mission trip when she hears I about totally like mission TV. trips on murder. No, I like a good, I like a good series, but I don't like she murder li- mysteries. No, she it's dark. Jo- what is she like? Oh, no, romance. I, we, yeah, she's like yeah, yeah. like romance. Chivalrous she loves romance. romance. I yes. hate romance just for romance sake. It has to have something dark to it. Ooh, I can't anyway, stand dark. But anyway, don't worry about my. Yeah, you know, I think I'm going to heaven still. But <laughs> I'm just having fun. I know she is. Telly, um. Is something that my husband and I like to enjoy wind down, you know, after after the day together. Our kids have kind of gone, but there's still a lot of people coming in and out of our house. So we lock the door and it's just our time. Serene always calls me in the middle of it. And I'm like, hey, we're watching our tally. Um, but that is the time when you want to eat. Bless yourself, right? So that's the time when we take our dinner. Remember, we don't have kids in the house yes. anymore. We eat our dinner. Then it's dessert time. Why not bless yourself, Right. But in my season, I know I'm not going to have a big piece of cake, THM, or otherwise after my meal. I could have that for an afternoon snack. But piling that fuel, big fuel, after a meal is just dumb. And you're going to be sitting all evening. Because I've had enough calories. I bless myself with a really good meal. Yeah. I wasn't skimpy. I had food, girl. Yeah. Now I do like to enjoy something. Yeah. So I will have just one thing. I will have um, you like a, a nice dry glass of a small dry glass oh, that's, of wine. That's with my meal. Oh, that okay, doesn't that's count as wheel. my dessert. Oh, okay. I will oh, have you're, you're one French. of the dark chocolate peanut butter. She's old money, you know, wine things. with a meal. I do. I have. I want to talk about the wine belly later on too. Okay, Can you yeah. write that down? I have one thing. I'll have. Um, I'll make myself a little bit like just a small cottage berry whip, not the full thing, because it's just it's for satisfaction of mind here. I'll have one one dark chocolate thing. I won't yeah. like go overboard, and I'll just have it, and then I'll be blessed and call myself done. Yes, because Netflixing or streaming, whatever you're doing, you if you're gonna do it and bless yourself with it and self care yourself after a busy, long, stressful day, you better get smart about what you're shoving in your mouth. I don't care if it's spry chewing gum. I don't care if it's a xylitol mint or berry flavored something or other. Stick something else in your mouth. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Or have a hot chocolate that's THM. Or do something, but sipping <sighs> a brothy herb tea. Yeah. Do you so, want me to talk about the alcohol belly now? Would it be a good time? It you would want be me good. Later? It would be a good time. Okay. So bellies can happen due to wrong alcohol use. There are two ways to, to get a, an alcohol belly. Excessive alcohol, of course. We know that's not good and for us. And beer is worse. Yeah. Or sugary alcohol. Okay. So Like what? What do you mean sugary? Beer, well, I mean beer, beer unless it's a low carb beer. But I don't like beer. But you can do it with wine too. Hey, our accent sounds weird. Beer. Beer. How do you say it? Bear? I say beer. 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 That's what y'all say. No, we say beer. Beer. I say beer. Oh, beer. 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 Sounds weird. I'll say that. Oh, they say a strong R. Beer. 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 Okay, yeah. You pronounce that Um, R. It it tastes like cat beer. Of course, you know, and not against wine. I drink wine about four nights a week. I have a glass and just keep it dry, people. Do you get luxury when you drink wine? Do I get what? Like old money luxury. Like you just. Charlie. Charlie's big thing is to so grab wines from around the world, and, and we, we have the we best love. Israeli wine, man. It's yeah, so good. we had the people on the podcast. We like Israeli wine. The Israeli uh, good company. people. Oh so man, they've got clean wine. So I drink a clean wine. Jewish grapes. And it's it's like God just grapes. don't do the sweet ones. So you've got white, and you've got red, and you've got dry, dry varieties of both. Actually, rosé, which is a red um, wine made the white way. Yes, that can be dry too. And I love rosé. So you've got your white set of dry. What are they? They are your Pinot Grigio, your Sauvignon Merlot. Blanc. No, the whites. And your um, oh 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 Chardonnay. My, my favorite. That um, what is that stuff that cow likes? We're talking about reds. You yes, want to go to reds? Red. Yeah, I know. We're not up to reds yet, but we'll oh. go there now. Um, you've got your reds, which are your Malbec. Malbec. Yeah, I love a Malbec. Saying, that's yeah. my favorite red. You've got your Cab Sav. Cabin your Sambalot. What? Merlot. You've got your Pinot Noirs. Just get it dry and you'll be fine. What's your favorite wine of all time, both of you? Well, currently, right now, it's this wine from Israeli Wine Club and it's their New Rosé. I've got it here. It's literally, I've never had a favorite wine before. I've just liked wines. It tastes like um, cherry amaretto. It has strawberry and blossoms. It's this best wine in the world. 
And it is I like super a centimeter, dry. a centimeter about twice a week of wine. I like to taste oh, it and shush, to really experience. Shush up with your centimeter, you know, eh? That's fair. No, People, I, I just like to taste it. I don't want to. I don't enjoy swallowing that kind of strong alcohol flavor. Okay. But I love, I love detecting all of the different nuances. Okay, of wine. this I love wine, my favorite it. wine in the world right now is Rose Gila G I L A D Terra Nova Winery from Israel. They won't Israel. be able to get it unless they go through the Israeli. Good I don't know. Wine club. Can I see? Israeli good can wine. I see That's a where I get it. Yeah, it's dry. It's oh, it's it, amazing. Uh, where do you get so it? Amazing Israeli wine club. Oh, you order it online. Yeah, yeah. we're part of the Israeli wine club. <laughs> she, they're part of it. I'm part of it. Nate's part of it. You can just order wine bottles there, though. You don't have to be part of the club. Wow. Um, the next thing, so if you are a beer drinker, I'm not saying you can't, you suddenly have to not be because people are serious about their beer. If you do drink regular beer, you will get a belly. Okay. Mm. So there are some good low carb beers. My husband will drink a low carb beer from are time they good to time. Though? Don't know. Cause they I can't don't, be. maybe not. Beer so is carb. if you're going to be a beer lover and like, you know, really care about the stout and use the it ale, as the vitamin pleasure, which yeah, just is do it now and then, and okay. then drink other things on your regular. I never, I never drink until I do. And, and usually it's when I'm out in public and rarely. well, let me talk about spirits then. Well, I got to recommend a beer. Okay. It's from Bearded Iris in Nashville. It's called Home Style. And it's a good, here's, here's why I recommend it. Not only is it the best tasting beer of all human history, but it is so good that you, you it's treat beer. It's special beer. It's occasional. So occasional vitamin me, P. Yeah, to me, it, uh, I don't know. It's like those light beers kind of encourage uh frequency <laughs> and lots of it <laughs> yeah. whereas this is more of that like that thick and creamy experience well i think that's yeah. what that rosé is you oh, just want to have one glass and it's so special yeah. you just you're yeah. fine i do want to talk about spirits because if you're drinking spirits you can also get a belly because usually they come in cocktails With cocktails sugary. will yeah. so quickly give you a belly do you know that's why people gain 10 pounds on a vacation yep. yeah it's the cocktails. not just the food it's mostly the cocktails yeah. so yeah. if you want to have a cocktail um tequila or vodka they're both two good spirits, sparkling water and a twist of lime. It's amazing. I heard gin was... Gin's fine too. Well, I heard that gin doesn't have like phyllotates. What's it called? Phytates? Phytates? <sighs> Conjures? Phylates. I don't know. Gin is... Suppo- I, a gut specialist said if he recommends people with uh, having gut issues, if they have drinks, to do gin. Well, I heard that same thing for tequila too. I've heard that about gut. tequila because yeah. it's probiotic. Mm-hmm. Is, tequila, right. is that the rumor? Is that true? Tequila's and, and, probiotic. And, and moving on. Yeah, they say it is. Um, moving on. The um, It's very similar though. This is what I was going to tack on to, the, to that wonderful... Um, thing that you oh my goodness the, this the, has to be a part two potty why because so, i've got to tack, tackle the men over. we're already okay, an hour the in board, the bored belly it's okay bored belly oh because yeah, you're bored well you're bored and you just you just eat because you're bored like what else is there to do how can you get bored on this planet so 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 we got to get other hobbies some people's only hobby is to be a foodie and that's awesome to be a foodie i'm a foodie i love i love food i love trying different food i love thinking about food but i've got other hobbies too hmm. and you got to know when to roll that hobby away and get your other hobby out yeah. Yeah. Take up knitting. And um, something to do with your hands. Yes, 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 exactly. And then let's see here. Um, we've done the life is too hard, but we've done the so let me just see here. Um, the um, the post baby belly. We have to talk about that. Well can I are we gonna do a part two because I have got the um, menopause belly oh. and we've got to do postpartum belly. Um, we've got to do the unique You don't think belly. sometimes we go to the full hour. You don't think we can just pull that off? Okay, then. I think because well, I just want to touch on these quickly. The post baby belly, it can be even years out. So it's you could have lost all the weight, right? But you've just got like a, it's just everything's just kind of hanging out loose there. Um, so you can look into rehab. Uh, our workings program is it, it'll start you off in that rehab. You can also go to a specialist. Sometimes it's bad enough you might need to go through a specialist. Posture but, that we talked about yeah. before really going to help. Let me just go through this one at least quick, and then surgery if needed. Sometimes mm. it's some people have had twins. They're really short. Their belly went way out, and it's just it's really needs that split down the middle yeah. just won't reconnect. Right, and other people have used it as an excuse. Oh, this is just. You know, it's just my baby. Bearing. Yeah, he's 18 now, but yeah, yeah, it's yeah, my yeah. baby weight. <laughs> yeah, but the thing is, though, is you don't have, if 
you may not choose to have surgery, but if you've tried rehab and it's still there, it's okay. It could be a beautiful mm-hmm. baby. You know, you ball the babies. It's like your beauty scar, your mm-hmm. beauty mark of, of bearing life. And that's okay. It's not unhealthy. Well, I would have to say this. Although it does, it, it can affect posture and pain. I went back. back pretty well after my pregnancies to what I was before, Me but too. my body forever changed in certain ways. I think once you're pregnant and everything gets pushed out to a certain extent you you don't have to actually seek to be that exactness no, you were I'm beforehand. talking post baby belly i'm talking about an actual diastasis yes i'm talking about where the linea alba which is the connected tissue between the two um the rectus abdominis those two lines of six-pack abs they are there's a broken system yes. there and they cannot they're not connected and there's there's um it's quite deep of a wound and it's stretched out to the point where when you try and activate your your core, you can't. Mm-hmm. And so you don't have any grounding for exercise. You actually shouldn't be doing too much lifting or anything like that if you cannot activate your core because that is like protecting And one thing we always and- say too, after a baby in that first six months, you have to be so careful and gentle. You have this wound. And so, so many women jump back and they're like, oh my goodness, I gained weight, I'm out of shape. And so they literally go really into exercise again with gusto and that's the wrong time eight weeks and under you just brilliant posture mm-hmm. nice Belly breathing. gentle walks yeah you'll lo- go to um get online and look at rehab mm-hmm. you know stuff but don't even do our work-ins mm. after eight weeks start with our work-ins and stay there till about six months and then add on whatever work so in you the, want the idea if is you're, you're not working, working, working the, out well we are working out in our work-ins but it's all from the inside out like okay. we activate the core and we teach them how to secure all of that and we have some rehab moves in the beginning but I do work in still about six months and then I'm always healed. And so I move on to weightlifting and mm-hmm. all of that. Um, well, let's keep going soon. What do you have? Because I want to talk about the men. Okay. Well, belly. I've got the womanly belly and we're saying it's a nice curve. You, you talked about it. We just got to embrace that. Somewhere yeah. to put your organs, you know. Yeah. Um, Mal- Marilyn one Monroe. I mean, it's not bad to have a nice curve on your tum no. tums. Okay. Um, the genetic blood sugar belly. Pearl's going to talk about that when she talks about insulin resistance belly. Because sometimes you're doing all the right things like my husband and their family, no matter what they eat, they turn it to sugar on their belly. But yeah, it's just I know. a condition. But he's walked out of that with some wonderful help of GLP-1 and changing his body composition mm-hmm. with lifting weights. Um, we The I don't care belly or the I, yeah, the I don't care belly. Mm. Some women just don't care. They, maybe it's they don't think some they're worth care. caring. Mm-hmm. You know, maybe it's just like, Maybe I'm just trying to get into the psych of I don't care because I've always cared. Yeah. But some women, they have had trauma. They've gone through abuse and mm-hmm. they maybe they don't think that they're worth caring. Mm-hmm. Or maybe it's because of abuse, they, they don't want to be in, mm-hmm. in any kind of shape that draws attention or anything. So there can be psychological um, broken places Definitely. around that that need healing. You know I'm what not I trying wonder- to address that, but what's that? I wonder if there is the... Um the security belly. In other words, uh, our income is really strong. We can do multiple vacations a year. My husband is not the cheating kind nor the leaving kind. That is bingo. That's what do where I I'm need going. to? I have no motivation to yeah. to think about these things. Everything's right. going great for me. Yeah. But see, and that's what I would like to say. And this is going to be mean. This is going to be just this straight is the mean talking. Belly okay, bully belly. I believe, <laughs> I believe in faithfulness, and I believe in 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 husbands and wives appreciating each other for who they are as as their soulmate internally and fr- and in friendship and 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 in just um, just a beautiful companion for life. But I do believe that when we signed up for marriage. It's not just about what we're getting out of it. It's also about what we can give. And I think from a woman's perspective, I know that I felt a responsibility like, wow, my husband, you know, he signed up for me. I I need to keep bringing it. Hmm. It's only fair. It's only my responsibility. And he's a great man. He's going to love me probably if I had a wart on the end of my nose Hmm. and whatever shape I was in. If I got blown up and half my limbs were off he'd still love me and you've seen that in beautiful relationships right they come back from war they've got uh, scars all over their face and they've got two limbs missing and they still have beautiful relationships I'm all about that but when we can we should take responsibility of what our body looks like 
to bless our spouse because the marriage is a sexual relationship mm. and we owe it to the other to take care and of just it. to have a sexual relationship you need to be in reasonable shape to keep that it's just the cardio requires it of sex just the act itself i mean so i think that that's hey you want to be married you signed up for sex right you signed up to sex to keep that going long as it's humanly possible of course there are times when it can't happen but sometimes we forget it men forget it women forget it and it's like no i'm just married no you also signed up for certain things in the marriage contract that's right i 100 percent agree Ooh, bully belly because party it's, the, it's because the marriage relationship is not a roommate relationship unless like pearl said some things happen in life it makes it humanly impossible mm. right some people get paralyzed from the waist mm. down some things happen we're not talking about that but when when there is ability to contend for unity and oneness, we should because it's what sets the marriage relationship apart from all other relationships. And, and it's not just should like, hey, you Christian woman, have sex with your husband. No, it's it how wonderful you. it is for you and how it keeps you alive and how it lengthens your life. And if you want to be selfish about it, yes, it's for you. If you want to not be selfish about it, yes, it's for you and your husband. And it's not even about pleasure. I mean, it is. Well, it is. No, of course it is. But I'm saying it's deeper than that. It's about unity and oneness. Mm. And that type of communion together, Mm. it brings about a closeness that that you can't get any other way. Yes. May I speak about the meno or lose your hormones belly now? I mean, here, here, right, fellas? (laughs) (laughs) And and, and the one I had underneath is the the, the I give up belly. That goes along. And just before you, that was the other one I had. And it's the same thing. We just give up. We just, we just. And sometimes a belly is a protective force, protection against intimacy, Mm -hmm. a protection against hurt, protection. And then that requires some, you know, some. We would encourage deeper healing, mm-hmm. um, counseling in the word or another, you know, wise counselor mm-hmm. in your life. Yeah. Um, and, and one more sta- statement, because you're not just giving up on you. You're giving up for your spouse, too. And that's yeah, not fair. Yeah. Um, so I want to talk about the. Can I say one more thing? Yes. It's your podcast. For our men, like my husband and your husband and so many great husbands out there that are good men that keep their eyes for their wives. Eyes it's not OK. Price. To just say, oh, great, I'm secure because they're that kind of man. No, we want to honor that kind of man. Mm. If your husband's a good man, keeps his eyes for you, even if, even if you know, no matter how you look, beautiful, bless him by, by, by working as hard as you can to, to bless that kind of guy. Yeah. And they deserve that because... And we're not talking to men here, or maybe daddy would say that to other men. Yeah. He, yeah. What, in terms of them staying on yeah. top of their game? Yeah. Oh, I could take the next hour right. yeah. and talk about how guys just let it slide mm-hmm. and then complain about what they're not getting. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. So. Oh, yeah. It we goes are, both we ways. talk to women because we're women. But yeah, yeah, Dan, you could take it away for hours. But anyway, I want to talk about the men of belly and about the insulin, reba- uh, insulin resistance belly because the two combine. Hey, right? one quick note for the men. Yeah. Um, my wife got super motivated to hit the gym, if you will. Yes. The moment I did. Yes. And not a day before. Wow. (laughs) Just that she she was just like, you're not getting Hollywood hot. (laughs) And I'm just going to be a local town wife. (laughs) That was kind of her mentality. Has she kept it up as you've kept it up? Oh, like like uh obsessively really i, I mean it. if i go out she will like drop pots and pans and, <laughs> and, and walk right out to that gym like yeah. as i'm doing That's it so cute it's I not love it. danny worked out earlier and so i'm gonna find time yeah it's oh he's heading out there just, <laughs> yeah like a, her bat belt just falls off That's like really whatever funny. she's doing and she's on I love she that. and she follows me out and the whole time i'm there she's That's doing her little she's got little cuteness. pink weights love it um so as women, as we go through these later pause seasons of perimenopause and menopause and postmenopause, what happens is we do gain belly fat typically. Mm-hmm. There are exceptions to the rule, but it happens. And there are many reasons. So the loss of estrogen itself is a big one. When you lose estrogen, you take on more of a man's barrel shape because you don't have estrogen. Estrogen is the one that causes a waist and hips and thighs. It gives you insulin sensitivity. It does as well. But it is the thing that makes a, a girl go from a girl into a woman during puberty, which gives her a waistline out at the hips, bum, all of that. Hey, let's just 
let's just pause this. It's not every shape too is going to be waistline Absolutely. as much We're as other waistlines. all lines. unique. Some are more athletic. Some yeah. are like very hourglass. But and that's does, not the fault no, of No, I'm not saying we're gen. all... Yeah. To say but you're, you're saying, saying Marilyn Monroe. Yeah. We're not all Marilyn Monroe. Right. Yeah, some of us are just long and lean, or other yeah. ones really curvy. Whatever. But, but but whatever waistline you were born, yeah, you know, you were born to have. Yes, once es- estradiol came. Yeah. Now, as that starts to decline, and it starts to decline in the perimenopausal mm. years, that estrogen is no longer there to keep stimulating your fat distribution. Mm. And as your body senses that you're losing the potent estrogen, which is estra- estradiol, your body senses that lack and starts making estrone, which mm-hmm. is E1. Estra- estradiol is E2. So your body's like, I need estrogen. Estrogen is what I run on. Estrogen, every receptor in my brain, every receptor in my organ requires estrogen. What am I going to do? I'm going to make my own estrogen because my ovaries aren't making enough. So it makes estrone in your fat cells. Estrone is the inflammatory estrogen. Well, yes. And they say it's causative of that it's associated with higher breast cancer and all of that. Women post menopause get the most breast cancer, they have the highest estrone. But there has been no absolute right. like as estrone causes it's it. It's not protected. It's like associated, estradiol. yeah. So estradiol, we call it estradiol, is very anti inflammatory. So what happens in your belly? You put on actually rather than anti inflammatory, yeah. um, feminine fat layers you put on and you put on um yeah inflammatory ones right in your belly because your body wants more estrogen so Mm -hmm. it makes a strone it's all it can do so that's why after menopause you'll notice that women thicken around Mm -hmm. the middle and it's just more of a a barrel shape it's because they have lack of estradiol which keeps your waist and then they have more estrone, which thickens your waist. So there's a two-part reason there mm. too. They also lose testosterone. And what does testosterone do? Keep our muscle mass, our lean body mm. mass. And so that keeps us burning fuel. We have less lean body mass as our and muscles. And the, the less lean. But so yeah. if our muscles, especially in our limbs, yeah. start getting smaller, then the then it makes the, the middle look bigger and you'll yeah. get the sticks with the so bar- our bum, barrel. So our bummy flattens yeah. because we don't have as much estradiol, which keeps our bummies. Um, and, and testosterone then, that keeps the glutes Testosterone powerful. keeps our muscle, which is the glute. And so as that goes, we cannot burn our foods. We eat. Even if we're on the perfect diet, we're not burning them as well as we used to when we had muscle mass, when we had hormones. And so with a flatter glutes, we also have a thicker stomach. Yes. And if, that doesn't mean, oh, no, no, I have to go low carb. Or, yeah. oh, no, no, well, I have to intermittent fast or low calorie. It well, doesn't it, mean it, that. It happens because women get yeah. desperate and it's the same thing. It causes insulin resistance and insulin gets such a bad rap. Mm. Like, insulin is an, is an amazing hormone that keeps us alive yeah. and it drives our protein and carbs mm. and nutrients into our cells. But these days it's vilified because it's known as the big bad insulin resistance and everyone wants to lower it by lowering carbs mm-hmm. and by fasting. And yes, it drops and it drops no, on paper. Insulin helps get it in. What we need to do is make the muscles hungry again. Yeah. We need yes. to make them So hungry. let's not be afraid of insulin. I mean, let's not spike it, yeah. which happens when you overdo sugar and devitalize mm-hmm. carbs. But let's allow it to be driven into our cells like mm-hmm. it used to. Now, how does that happen? Well, we can do what Serena and I did, which is replace our hormones very skillfully. And and start working out with heavy weights. But what if you can't replace your hormones? Right this time, maybe you don't trust anyone. You don't know. Our book hasn't come out or you've been told you can't. Perhaps you've had breast cancer in your past. Start out with going to the gym and changing the way you exercise. Don't get on the treadmill for hours anymore. Mm-hmm. Just start safely Doing body weight first mm-hmm. till you get your form right and, and basic moves like squats, mm-hmm. deadlifts, lunges. If you have knee problems because of the inflammation of not having enough mm-hmm. hormones, there are modifications you can learn online or, you know, um, from some trainer somewhere. The way you do, it doesn't involve your knees as much. But start getting form right and then start adding weight little bit by little bit because you've got to get those muscle cells hungry. You do. And, and then your insulin resistance, you know, can lower very slowly. But guys... And it, we're saying... It, it, try if you if you think you're one that won't want to replace your hormones, yeah. which is very natural and safe. But if you don't think you will want to start, if you're younger and you're listening, 
yeah. start in your late premenopause so that yeah. through your peri, you're on that train, like really building the body that's going to handle menopause well. And the other thing is protein. That's why Serena and I have become, you know, protein nerds. And we talk to you more about protein because that protects your muscles too. That keeps your muscles around so they don't disintegrate like happens to most of our, our women. And when you have a robust protein, not too much protein, but robust protein, it actually helps your waist stay thinner. Yeah. So it actually pr- helps prevent belly fat. Now, you might be listening, you think, oh my goodness, but I went on HRT, you know, and I yeah. had a bad experience, but I lift weights, I still have belly fat. So, you know, in our new book, Serena and I really go into this about how to really tweak things. And it involves that beautiful balance between protein and a lot of plants. You might, you, your gut might have to... Um, you know, just having a little microbiome flourish after a meal, you might get a little bit bloated. But what it can do is go in there and clean out your muscles mm-hmm. so that they can build back again more cleanly. And then I want to talk about what we haven't spoken about here today and how it is beneficial for some people, along with sex hormone therapy, is in Cretan hormone therapy. Yes, and that's that so proves that insulin is a beautiful thing because the Cretan hormone therapy, like a GLP-1, mm-hmm mimetic that mimics the natural GLP one that that our body creates um that people often lose just by age or also by yo-yo dieting that mm. can really crash those incretin hormones um but it actually works on the process of raising the insulin so the insulin can clear the blood sugar yeah. so incretin hormones you know we talk about sex hormones as you lose them you gain belly weight so serena and i you know put ours back but incretin hormones are the hormones made in your gut and they're actually made in your pancreas and they have an effect on your brain. And they are GLP-1, GIP, PYY, and CKK. CKK. And it's not just one of them. And yes, they're, they're very sensationalized right now, <laughs> very much so. Some people are against them and some people are for them and, and all of this nonsense. Whereas just some people just need them, okay? Well, I'm saying uh, some people have tried all of the ways to do it naturally yeah. in the body. They've tried the special prebiotic fibers yeah. that feed GLP-1 mm-hmm. naturally in the body and give us those satiety and creatine hormones. And they just need a therapeutic dose. My husband needed a therapeutic dose. And listen, some people say, no, Pearl and Serene, you don't know. There is a way to raise it. You know, you got to do this. You got to eat veggies first and all this stuff. We've listen, tried it. If Serene and I, we got so nerdy in the last two years mm-hmm. about finding natural ways to raise GLP-1, documented ways, mm-hmm. right? naturally all you can do with the foods god created and we went crazy studying till three in the morning so if it's out there serene and i have found it we've looked at the studies and we bring them in the book and it helps some people <laughs> it does that help. have mild issues yes with increased mm-hmm. hormone but people that have broken metabolic issue that they, they just need something a little more stronger and not everyone does but let's not shame the people that do for goodness mm-hmm. sake we're not going to stand for shaming, but we're also not going to be on that other side of things where it's just like, I'll oh, take a shot and that's all you have to do. No. No. So there's a beautiful balance. And I think that there is a beautiful, healthy belly for everyone. Yeah. That doesn't mean that it's tiny and flat and barely there, no. but it's just in a healthy place. I love it. I love it. I think we're done. <laughs> <laughs>